Let us have Viveka with reference to knowledge. So our question that we want to answer, which knowledge and action brings an end to the suffering? That is one way to understand. The other way to understand which knowledge leads me to awakening to my true nature. Both are more or less the same thing. So there is a beautiful verse by a great master in Vishnu Puran. You know, we have like Upanishads, we have 108 Upanishads. Some people say we have 365 Upanishads. Upanishad means group of text, complete books. Similarly, we have also the complete books by the group known as Purana. Purana, Puran, Pura means old mythological text that explains the same principle differently through the stories. So in that Purana, Vishnu Purana, first let me literally translate and then we will go a little deeply. What is our question? What knowledge that leads me to awakening? Which knowledge and action brings an end to the suffering. So the verse is Tat karma yanna bandhaya. Tat karma yanna bandhaya sa vidya ya vimuktai. The first line of the verse means what? That is action. What is action which does not promote any attachment? Honey, I love you. Check your mind. <laughs> does it create any attachment? You are already gone. See that understanding. Knowledge is simple understanding. And what is that understanding? There is a clarity. There is awareness, there is a knowledge, there is an experience, and you are already there. So, first line of the verse, every verse has four parts. The first part means that action which does not promote attachment, and that is the knowledge which liberates you from the suffering. The first line. It has two words. Even if you see my logo, I have written Sa Vidya Ya Vimuktai. Knowledge that liberates one from the bondage and the suffering, brings an end to the suffering, is the knowledge. And the second line, he clarifies. That too is wonderful. Aya Saya Param Karma Vidanya Shilpain Shilpanyai Punam. Now, what, what about other knowledge? All other action, what about other action? All other action is pointless effort and hardship. First, what is that action does not promote attachment is the real action. And other actions that all other action is just pointless effort, hardship. But no, Master recognizes that all other effort also brings you a skill set. You, ah, I learned driving, that is a skill set, but that has nothing to do to find my real nature. See that? All other knowledge... I have a knowledge of driving, that is a skill set. I have a knowledge of speaking English, that is also a skill. But this skill is not going to help me bring an end to the suffering. 
even if I become one of the best motivational speakers in the world. I have seen a couple of the, these motivational speakers. They have motivated millions of people and they committed suicide. <laughs> one of them is Andrew Carnegie. <laughs> How to win friends and influence people. <laughs> see that, see the difference. Oh, knowledge is the real knowledge that liberates me from suffering. And action is the real action, means karma. Practice. That practice which does not promote attachment. I'm not attached to any mindfulness or meditation. That's why I can give you kundalini, I can give you mindfulness, I can give you shanti meditation. And there is a long list. Why should I be attached? And... The rest of the knowledge may give me, may give me some craftsmanship. They, it raises my skills. Okay, that is okay. That is okay. Now we will go a little deeper. So first point of Viveka is real action from unreal action. You live into that state. Outwardly you say, how are you, honey? You hug everything, but inside, what should be the motive of the real action to express myself in love? Finished. Not in attachment. <laughs> Not in attachment. <laughs> and knowledge, I must gain knowledge, but I should separate. This knowledge is for the skill set to exist in the world to work with the people, the place. I have to work with the people, yes. So, what should be the real knowledge? Let me move with every human being as a human being. <clears throat> Finished. Anytime. So, what is happening? You are in Viveka. The first of the fourfold practices has reached to the height. So what is go going to happen? Somebody comes and all that. But it does not mean that love is inside. To get the things outside, I have to have a skill set. Love inside. If the guy is not listening, I have to little bit shout, get the things done. But that shouting does not have an element of anger, hesitation. Finished. So how that comes when we go into a deeper state of meditation. Go a little further. Now open this. Let us open this sutra. Knowledge means what? I am Taurus. Yes, that is a knowledge. Do I need to act to find that knowledge? No, I know it. So there is a clarity. There is an understanding. There is an experience. So knowledge means awareness, knowledge and experience here and now. You are sitting in a car listening to me. Awareness, knowledge and experience. No other thought enters and creates any problem. Knowledge, awareness, knowledge and experience. But who is the knower? If the knower is the mind, mind claims I am the knower, then I become husband before my wife and the husband fights with the wife. But when the knower is the self, where is the fight? Where is the duality? Where is the conflict? I live in the state of meditation. I simply, I'm living okay. Yes, the wife says you are a husband, but you are. The self is the knower. So when the mind replaces the self, it moves outside, it projects, and the projection creates a delusion, and the delusion creates a suffering. 
see the series. So again understand what is that knowledge? It is understanding, it is awareness, it is knowledge, it is my experience here and now. But who is the knower? Now see two parts. All knowledge happens in the mind, but the knower, the true knower is the self. Knower is not the mind. So what is the journey of meditation and awakening? That, that self is the knower. Then everything falls apart. Who solves this mystery of knowing thyself? That is what I say. Eastern wisdom is an instrument of knowledge to know the reality, to know the self. We already know too much about the mind. So Eastern wisdom is the knowledge who discovers who am I? And I'm repeating and then we will go a little. So we get knowledge from the sense organs, we get knowledge from the mind. What is the knowledge of the reality? Eastern wisdom is a special instrument of knowledge that helps us to go beyond and behind the mind to know the self. What we are understanding, which knowledge brings an end to the suffering, which knowledge, which action that does not promote attachment, so the knowledge, the action that does not promote attachment, and the knowledge that liberates me from the suffering will take me into the highest state of meditation or mindfulness and it will awaken. So what is the process? The Master says, Viveka, we are already separating. Action, knowledge, that promotes attachment, that liberates me from suffering. So I have already separated. But still the mind and the intellect is not clear how to separate. So in order to understand, let us see what the verse says. Sa vidya ya vimuktai. That knowledge is the power which liberates me from suffering. So the two questions arise. Is knowledge power or is knowledge a weakness? Now see, we are again separating. How it is power? So when I separate what knowledge is weakness, I am free. Whatever the knowledge that is left is already the power. If I separate it from which knowledge is weakness? So I should start with understanding which knowledge is weakness. Or is knowledge not a weakness? Or is knowledge always a power? So we will have a clarity. Just, just live into that state of awareness, knowledge and experience. So now let us go slowly. What is common understanding about knowledge? Common understanding about the knowledge is that if I learn computer, I become a computer programmer. I learn driving, I have a skill set of driving. Huh? I, I want to know anything, I Google it and I get the information and knowledge. In modern science, knowledge applied is technology. Technology applied is life lived in comfort, luxury and pleasure. Now see that. Pay attention. We are, no, it appears it is the right knowledge, no doubt. In the world outside, it is the right knowledge. Again, I'm repeating. Knowledge is power in the world outside. Good. 
नॉलेज अप्लाइड इज टेक्नोलॉजी दैट इज ऑल्सो गुड दैट इज ऑल्सो टेक्नोलॉजी इज ए पावर टेक्नोलॉजी अप्लाइड इन लाइफ लिवड इन कंफर्ट लग्जरी एंड प्लेजर राइट it creates a pleasure seeking mind that never stops it continues to run after more and greater pleasures that is why we upgrade our smartphones every year or two years or six months there is a long line in new york couple of years ago when the iphone started there were 2000 people in a line and that went on increasing technology is good no doubt it is power it is good but where it has taken my mind to pleasure seeking mind so means the knowledge that is promoting attachment <laughs> is a weak knowledge and we i forget pleasure is short lived uh what i what i did you know i phone is released today and i was standing in a line for 4 hours i purchased it ah uh, now i enjoyed it how long you have an enjoyment first you suffer standing in a line for 3 hours but the mind was obsessed with the pleasure seeking and the moment i have an iphone in my hand pleasure is short lived it decreases by repetition it ends knowledge of not self can lead to skill sets proficiency excellent workmanship but cannot lead me to awakening so i have to use it what are the gadgets are there technology i have to live my life you know i cannot say that you know i cannot live with the phone if i am living in the world oh then it is better to live in the himalayas so i don't allow the knowledge to become a weakness in my life <clears throat> viveka <laughs> you see that you live in meditation you need not to worry about it <clears throat> looking at a beautiful girl let me appreciate the beauty but if that promotes attachment Ah, uh, there is a long list. So those who get obsessed with that knowledge, what is that knowledge? A beautiful girl. It is like a smartphone I can use and throw. So the extreme cases, rape cases, extreme cases, violence. See that. knowledge of beauty is not wrong knowledge but it is a weak knowledge because mind has projected the happiness there the pleasure is seeking the mind so we can live in the same world with viveka so that the knowledge remains as a power what is that power knowledge that is a power why it is a power because it is not promoting attachment but rather it is helping me to liberate from the suffering from the pleasure seeking mind it can happen here and now it can happen at home it can happen in the office it can happen in interaction with the people it can happen when i live in a mansion it can happen when i live in a cottage it can happen i when i live in the himalayas it can happen when i live in the 
any state or city or county. Look at this verse. Awareness, knowledge and experience. With that knowledge I am exploring who am I. But instead of exploring who am I, the mind comes in front and mind claims I am. Come on, seek the pleasure. Stand in a line for three hours to get an iPhone iPhone will never change. Come on. It will remain as it is, even if you buy after a few months or you buy today. The sexual present will never change. <clears throat> Whether you go with today or you go after the year. <laughs> you see that. So when I see that, that knowledge becomes a power. See that. Then knowledge becomes a power. So live our life as a thinker, as a speaker, as a doer with the right knowledge follows the right action. If I don't have a right knowledge, then there is a wrong desire. And when there is a wrong desire, it leads to wrong action. And that, uh, why it is wrong? Because that wrong desire is promoting an attachment, likes and dislikes. It creates a craziness. It creates an obsession. And the wrong action, wrong desire leads me to wrong action. Very subtle but very clear in life. Knowledge is that power in the Eastern wisdom which liberates one from the suffering, stress and pain. And we already say it is an instrument of knowledge, Eastern wisdom. Whether you practice yoga, tantra, mantra, yantra, mindfulness, meditation, kundalini, are you using it as an instrument of knowledge? You will be liberated. Find out those teachers who use kundalini as a means to... to they first they get attached, they say, I have an awakening of Kundalini experience and I can give you, nobody can give it. Come on. <laughs> and they create a story around themselves. This thing happened at the age of the five or ten. I had a spark. So do you see the spark now? No. I had a previous experience of the spark. Come on, knowledge always remains. So you can filter out the, those teachings. They get obsessed, they get attachment. We know the knowledge that promotes attachment is not the right knowledge. Why should I be attached to anything? Knowledge grips the freedom. No, 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 only this meditation will help you. Come on then I become important as a teacher. In the Eastern wisdom, the student is more important than anything else. Who is seeking? So, many teachers make this knowledge as a weakness. And that weakness goes a long way you don't reach anywhere. What we are learning? Knowledge is the right knowledge. The right knowledge is the power. Why it is power? Because it liberates me from suffering. Opposite. Knowledge that promotes attachment, creates strong likes and dislikes. I get obsessed with it. All is the wrong knowledge and the path of the Eastern wisdom. 
Why we are doing this? To understand why the Viveka is so important in the success. Every master says, whether it is Patanjali or any Tantra master, whether it is Shiva or whether it is Krishna or Gita or Tantra or Mantra Viveka. You see, that's what I always say, regular practice with wisdom. That wisdom is Viveka. Viveka separates the right from the wrong. Knowledge in the same way, the right action from the wrong. Let me perform all my action and keep checking, maintaining my awareness. Is this action promoting attachment or detachment? Drop that detachment and see, can you act? Yes, you can I still act. You can still perform an action. You can speak having a big face when you are angry over someone and you can still act with a smile. What do I have to do with this girl? Let me express myself calmly. Let me personalize my expression. Because the way we talk to our honey, we cannot talk to our employee. So we have to personalize that expression. But the right action remains present within. Now, second part is. First part, second part is, does karma or action working or working bring success in the world outside? but cannot find the true nature. Action has no role at all in finding my true nature. Why? But then why should I practice? Practice is also an action. All actions, all practices are done to purify the mind. All actions are done. All steps of meditation are done to purify the mind. How long I have to purify? My house is 50 miles away from where I am. Let me drive 50 miles exactly and leave the car outside, leave the mind outside. But how to know it? When I practice meditation, I find I have not reached there. Why I have not reached there? The mind is interfering through the current impression, through the past impression. So let me continue the practice. See the secret of practice. No action can re help me to reach to a state of enlightenment. It has never happened. It will never happen. Why? <clears throat> Why it will never happen? The true nature is already present in within me. I need not to travel in space and the time in order to reach there. It is already within me, but it is covered by the impurity, by the ignorance, by vikshepa, by the incomplete knowledge of the self. So where the incomplete knowledge is present, it is present in the mind. That is preventing me to see, to be aware, to know and to experience who am I. So I need not to do anything outside, I need to do anything in the mind. The problem is in the mind, the solution must be there in the mind. So it means, should I leave all actions? No. The moment you do all these practices with, now understand the point, with the right knowledge, the mind will be purified. We normally start practicing with ignorance. I say practice with wisdom. That is the catch. 
There is nothing otherwise. So the question we are dealing with, does karma, karma means action or practice, bring success in the world outside? Yes, but cannot find the true nature if the action is promoting attachment. If it is not done with the clarity, with understanding, <laughs> see that how simple it is. It appears simple. <laughs> it is easy as that. But as we continue the practice, now coming again back, going back, is knowledge power or weakness? Now we have understood. Knowledge is weakness that promotes, causes attachment, leads to desire, desire leads to confusion, confusion leads to loss of memory, loss of memory leads to loss of intelligence, that results in delusion, and when I live in delusion, that causes the suffering. Knowledge is power that creates understanding, clarity, and it leads me to the doubt-free mind. Now check it. What is the doubt-free mind? You are Taurus, I am Girish. Where is the problem? There is no doubt. Can I have that doubt-free mind about the practice, about my true nature? Can I have that doubt-free mind? What happens? I am already there. Now check, is karma a power or a weakness? Karma is all weakness. If the I-ness is there, which is attached to every karma, I have given you so much of money, why don't you understand? I will not give you any money. You see that? I is more important, not karma. <laughs> now, for example, for example, <laughs> I is more important. I have told you not to do this, but you did. So then I'm not responsible. I, 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 I. I takes over the karma. And when I takes over the karma, every karma that is taken over by the I, it comes from the mind, from the past impression, from the likes and dislikes. That causes the suffering in me that people don't notice because I'm using the strong eye to bring them down. That karma is full of weakness. My master used to say that once you discover inner peace, that peace is thousand times stronger and powerful than any anger, hesitation, violence, crime in the world. Is karma power or weakness? Simple principle, what is karma? Karma is equal to mathematical principle. Karma is equal to action plus I. And find what is action, live into that action mode. Action is karma minus I, purifies the mind. That is known as the purification of the mind. <laughs> there is nothing else. But because this I is attached to the memories, the past experiences, not only from this life, but from the previous birth, and as I'm performing all my actions in daily life, it is also creating further impressions. These impressions interact with the existing impressions are, is known as vasanas. The vasanas or the impressions cannot be known by the mind. Its impact is known. So when you, when you are very hard on that impact, how? Purify the mind by performing an action. Without I, purifies the mind. So when you perform that action, you just, you act just because of peace and happiness. You just act to express your nature, bypass the past impression that triggers any event, 
Or you say, thank you very much, let me work, let me act into that state of the peace. You are more concerned, you are more aware of within, from within that action is performed. Your mind is totally outside, you focus on the person, the people, and then you perform the action, you have already forgotten yourself. And that forgetfulness comes from the past impression, it interacts with the previous existing impression, it creates further impressions and vasanas. That is what is known as the cycle of birth and the death. Now I cannot get out of it. How simple it is. No, I thought better to pick up this verse. So there be, should be a clarity. What is that clarity? Awareness, knowledge, and experience. Are you Taurus? You see, awareness, knowledge, and experience is there. The mind need not to think. Even when I ask you, are you Taurus? The mind says he knows it. Why he's asking? So you don't say it. You don't speak it. Thought is not required. Distraction is not there. Clarity, awareness, knowledge, and experience is there. Look at it. How simple it is. So now people don't study clearly. People don't study under a teacher. So even in Hatha Yoga text, there is a... Uh, it is Gheranda Sahita or Hatyog Pradipika. I don't remember exactly, but I remember the verse. Even in Hatha Yoga, and it is in the beginning, what that masters of a Hatha Yoga says, there are, there are no fetters, chain like those who live in illusion and delusion. You have committed a crime. You are passing your days in the prison. And that prison is of illusion and the delusion. That is what the Hatha Yoga says. Second part, he says, no power like that is gained by the practice of yoga. So here, what is that power? You purify the mind. You start living into that state of calmness and peace. There is no friend higher than the knowledge, the right knowledge, which is power. Why we say knowledge is power? Because if there is a right knowledge, it is, it is power that constantly liberates you from the suffering. And no greater enemy than egoism, karma. Karma, see that. He explains the same thing in a different way. You know, some people may get clarification from this verse or from the previous verse that we just covered action that promotes attachment. No, no, after all, I'm standing in a line to buy an iPhone. What is the attachment? I have the money, I'm buying it. So those who are living in illusion, they don't want to understand. They will never understand. Three hours. I saw them three hours in a December when there was a snowfall going on and you are standing across. You are wasting your money. And why? after six months, the price will be down. It is the same iPhone. <coughs> See that one example, but we do all kinds of action that promotes attachment. When I am angry over my honey, it is a perfect example of an attachment. I don't become angry over other beautiful girls. See that. We don't realize this. 
we don't ex discover this. See, the one is simple example. <clears throat> I fight because of the attachment or detachment. I become angry because of attachment and detachment. Come on. I am frustrated because of attachment and detachment. So check. Am I frustrated? Am I angry? Am I hesitated? Oh my goodness. Now this action, I'm going to take an action in that mood. It is going to promote attachment. Hold on. Let me pull up. Pull up my mind. Find out the right knowledge. Shake off my head. Here and then. Move into awareness, knowledge and experience and I'm done. I'm free. I'm free. Here and now. That is why the Master says knowledge is that power which, which promotes detachment, which promotes dispassion. That is why we covered in one of the talks because you have to focus more on the Viveka where Agya will come on its own. Applied Viveka is where Agya. See that applied Viveka means the right knowledge in action. I'm expressing outside, honey, how are you doing? I know you are upset with me. Let us talk and discuss and you live into that peace and happiness. <laughs> Let others be. <laughs> so, so you are already, you have already applied Vivek, uh, Veragya. Vera, this passion is already there. Because you are happy inside. The other guy who is deeply attached, who is fighting, who is, who is push pulling you to, to get attached, who is making you upset so that you so that you know at least the other guy wants to say that are you not upset? No, be upset. So show that you are upset, but don't be upset. Showing upset but not being upset is the action that is not promoting any attachment. Oh, you are the only one I love you in this world. Finish. <laughs> because the love cannot be personalized. Knowledge cannot be personalized. The peace cannot be personalized. Why it is true nature? And that true nature is common to every human being. That is why it cannot be personalized. I'm putting forth a lot of arguments in order to so that the mind, mind keeps going back to this. Now see even in Gheran Saita or in Hatyo Pradipika. So it says it has six or seven organs of Hatha Yoga. Then what it says in the beginning? Purification of the body is done by cleansing practices. So when I understand that I have to do these purification of the body until I experience a freedom from the body. Is that right knowledge or not? So I have to perform a right action until the body is purified. Purification of the body means now the body can stand, withstand even two or three hours of meditation and I'm done with it. Same with asana. Asana gives you the strength to withstand the pressure coming from the past impression when you are doing meditation. It is talking of inner strength. It is not talking of six packs or ten packs. It has nothing to do with it. So it means you sensitize the body. You infuse consciousness in the body that prevents the past impression to create any challenges in the body. This is what even the Hatha Yoga says. And we don't understand that. Mudra practices leads to steadiness of the breath. This is what I say. Pratyahara gives you the state of calmness. Dhyan leads to Viveka. 
to know the self and samadhi gives you freedom from the suffering. Even Hatha Yoga in the very, in every text, first few verses it gives you the clarity. But we say, no, can you do headstand pose? Better you do it. And be ready to have some uh, problems in the brain. When the existence has given me, the head should face upside. Why should I face it down? We don't understand. We don't pick up. So what is today's understanding? It is the awareness, knowledge and understanding. So you can pick up. Uh, am I aware? Yes. Do I know? Yes. Do I experience? Yes. Now see that. Mind is bringing in lot of thoughts, to, so there is no right knowledge. You simply maintain your awareness, that's all. Awareness, knowledge and experience. There is a clarity, I'm at my home and talking to you. What else I need to do? Nothing. So even the action is not required. You are living into that state. We are living into that state. So see that any action that promotes attachment. So attachment means all the eight factors. Object, attachment, desire, confusion, memory, loss of intelligence, delusion, suffering. So the suffering is already hidden inside. When I say honey with an attachment, and when I say honey without attachment, where is the suffering? I have broken the chain of eight factors. I still express honey outside. But now action with attachment, action without attachment, knowledge with weak, knowledge is weakness with attachment, knowledge is power with Viveka. I just concluded this, uh, I told you <laughs> online session. Sir, I have holidays and you know, that is why my meditation succeeded. And I was talking of projection and the delusion. And she was saying me, you see that? No, I've been spending, you know, now I'm enjoying my holidays. That is why I attended today's program and that meditation was highly successful because of holidays. In Viveka, you have holidays forever. <laughs> but I cannot say because she is so much attached. How can I say? I cannot say anything. I cannot say. So this is what happens. That is why the teacher has to speak, has to personalize, has to educate. And then one more share the experience. She is a Kundalini Yoga teacher in New Jersey. She is wonderful. She said in the beginning there were a lot of challenges. I said, from where those challenges came? From the wrong knowledge. So wrong, wrong knowledge promoted the wrong action. That is why you were moving the body hundreds of times in the first half of the session. The next half of the session, she said, I was totally settled into a deeper meditation. Now see that first half, if I had the right knowledge, the entire one hour of meditation practices. So I need not to practice two hours of meditation, but I need to practice only one hour with the right knowledge and the right action. You see, see a lot of stuff, you know, I instantly picked up and her husband said, this was one of the most wonderful. Third, share the experiences. That is also very interesting. So he said to me, sir, 
you when you gave the step of shantoham i saw shantoham written in the space deep inside my heart oh your mind has already gone so deep within you see the image yes yes that is really good you are reaching there wonderful but don't try to repeat the experience that will be an attachment <laughs> just flow just do not swim just float in meditation that is the key yes sir yes sir i understand but whether you understand when you do the practice that will be seen later <laughs> that will be seen later that is how that is how instantly i pick up based on these principles based on these no no, no i am fairly relaxed no i have a lot of nose problem that's why you know i was having a problem that is why i did not succeed in meditation come on bring the make the knowledge as a power and then act on it no nose problem no body problem you are not the body so when you have a correct and right knowledge you live into that awareness knowledge and experience you are already there so see the questions that we have answered which knowledge knowledge promotes attachment which knowledge promotes viveka which action promotes the attachment which action promotes detachment why the knowledge becomes weakness in tantra when we study possibly we will also study shiv sutra in the shiv sutra or yes i think that master and master is shiva and who, what he says gyanam bandha he says knowledge is bondage come on. so now we understand that knowledge which is a weakness is a bondage but unless we clearly understand then oh everywhere knowledge is power but knowledge is weakness so our mind in delusion say clarifies that no no i think it is a wrong verse it should be deleted from it no the delusion should be deleted from the mind knowledge is bondage gyanam bandha so now understand from that point of view your mind is confused mind has lot of thoughts about any person thing and per- in the world oh knowledge is bandha drop that knowledge move to the right knowledge whether it is in business or in profession or in relationship or in daily living what will happen i have a lot of problem in the bed and nothing will happen and whatever has to happen it will definitely happen one day we all will die one day so what will happen we will die Huh? we can give a guarantee to everyone you will die one day <laughs> so because i have a fear of the death knowledge is bondes see that knowledge is a bondes so this knowledge as a bondes when it enters into the mind then the mind lives in three states either it is constantly wandering it means it is crazy or it it has a forgetfulness or it is obsessed what patanjali says i think we i discussed about it five subjective states of the mind three subjective states when of the mind will cause you the bondage and the suffering only the fourth and the fifth can lead you to the state of meditation you see every master says the same thing differently every master says the same thing differently you see that how easy it is to 
And what is that meditation, awareness, knowledge, and experience where it is happening in the mind? Is there any thought pulling me down? No, there is no thought. Why there is no thought? All the thoughts are coming from outside. They are coming and going. Awareness, knowledge, and experience. I am in the state of Viveka. There the right knowledge is promoting, moving the mind towards the journey of evolution. Right action is not promoting any attachment. It is still helps me to live in a purified state of the mind. You will see that Hollywood actor lives in a pure state of the mind and performs the role of a criminal outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see that action. And when he goes back to the home, he says, How oh, honey? And the wife says, You played your role very well. The wife is not scared. Because as a criminal, he has killed thousands of people in the film. <laughs> you live into this. So today is another higher aspect of 